Well, good evening everyone. I uh, hope that you are well. Uh, we're going to get started in just a moment. Let's wait for a few people to get on. Maybe time to invite a couple of people to come on. Good evening, Nave. Good evening, Marion. I hope you're well. Good evening, Sheila. Great to have you on. Good evening, Elizabeth. Hope you're well. So good to have everyone on tonight. But yeah, I hope we're, we're all doing well today. We'll give people a couple of minutes to get on and then we'll get into it. So it's always if I keep looking off camera, I've just got the, the chat running off to the side. Yeah, while well, people are jumping on, if you want to uh, get ready to read God's Word, uh, we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 24 tonight, and going to kick off in verse 1. We're going to continue our series looking at um, how God makes impossible possible, but tonight is actually going to be our last night looking at this theme on Thursdays, and we're going to look at two things. One, why we can believe that God can make the impossible possible. But then two, what do we do when that doesn't happen? Well, we've got good evening, Grizel. Good evening, Mary. I hope you're doing well. Good evening, Sharon. Good evening, Jenny Weaver. Long time no see you on a Thursday. I hope you're well. Nice to not be at work, yeah, I bet. That's it. Well, let's make a start. And before we start, let me just pray. Uh, maybe just where you are, maybe just take a moment. I don't know what your days look like. I don't know how stressful it's been. I don't know how busy it's been. But let's just push all distractions aside as we look to know more about God tonight, look more to go deeper into his word, deeper in a relationship with him. And Father, we thank you that you are good. We thank you uh, that we've got through this week up to this point. Lord, tonight, as we look at your word, as we look at this theme of mustard seed faith, of impossible become impossible, Lord, I pray that you would just get rid of all distractions. We will be focused on what you want to say tonight. We'll be focused on who you are and what you want to speak to us, what you want to challenge us on, what you want to equip us and encourage us with. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening, Caroline. Good evening, Miranda. Well, so we're going to start Luke 24. And this is a piece of scripture that... So yeah, everyone probably knows a bit about, whether even if you haven't been in church before. And this is looking at the resurrection of Jesus. And this is where I want to tie it in about how we can have faith and how we can believe that God makes the impossible possible. I said, and then after that, we're going to look at what to do if that doesn't happen, if it doesn't happen the way we think it's going to happen, if it doesn't happen in the time and that we think it's going to happen. But Luke chapter 24, and I'm reading from the message version, and it's titled, Looking for the Living One in a Cemetery. At the crack of dawn on Sunday, the women came to the tomb, carrying the burial spices they prepared. They found the entrance stone rolled back from the tomb. So they walked in, but once inside, they couldn't find the body of the master, Jesus. They were puzzled, wondering what to make of this. Then out of nowhere, it seemed two men, light cascading over them, stood there. The women were awestruck and bowed in worship. The men said, why are you looking for the living one in the cemetery? He is not here, but raised up. So here we've got the tomb that obviously Jesus was buried in on the Friday. And here we have the women that go to visit the tomb that prepared the spices for the burial. And he's not there. The stones rolled away and he's not there. And this is why I love it. This One of the things I love about this piece of scripture is this next point here. Remember how he told you when you were still back in Galilee that he had to be handed over to sinners, be killed on a cross, and in three days rise up? See, Jesus has already told them about this. Jesus has already spoke something into their life, that he was going to do something. And that's the first thing I want to encourage us with tonight, that perhaps Jesus is or God's given you a vision. Maybe you he said he's going to do something in your life way back. Could be years ago, could be weeks ago, could be days ago, could be hours ago. But I want you to be encouraged to hold on to the word that he speaks. 
because when Jesus speaks, it's not just a, a half promise. It's not just the it could happen. It will come to pass. You know, same as when Jesus said that he will build his church. He's building his church right now. Same way that his promises are yes and amen. Whatever is spoken of your life, keep hold of it. Grab hold of it because it will come to pass. Then they remembered Jesus' words. They left the team and broke the news of all of this to the eleven and the rest. Mary, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other woman with them kept telling these things to the apostles. But the apostles didn't believe a word of it, for they were making it all up. But Peter jumped to his feet and ran to the tomb. He stooped to look in and saw a few grave clothes, that's all. He walked away puzzled, shaking his head. The road to Emmaus, verse 13. That same day, two of them were walking to the village of Emmaus, about seven miles out of Jerusalem. They were deep in conversation, as I'm sure we would all be. You know, he is, where's Jesus? What's happened? Maybe who's took him? In the middle of their talk and questions, <laughs> Jesus came up and walked along with them, but they were not able to recognise who he was. Now, and here's just another point I want to bring up. This is not part of what I plan. But, you know, sometimes we can be looking for Jesus. We can be searching so hard when actually in reality he's there right beside us. You know, he's always there with us. Sometimes we're just kind of got our blinkers on and we don't recognise him. Or our life's so puzzled and clouded over that we don't recognise that the saviour, the one that makes a difference, the one that makes the impossible possible is there right beside us. And I love his response. There's no Jesus could quite easily stop them and say, look, it's me, you know. But he doesn't. He kind of just has like a bit of a chat with them. What's this you're discussing so intently as you walk along? And we'll see they're talking about him. They just stood there long faced like they had lost their best friend. Then one of them, his name was Cleopas, said, Are you the only one in Jerusalem who hasn't heard what's happening during the last few days? See, even though he's there talking to him, talking to the one they're talking about, talking to the one that has the answers, <coughs> and still just totally oblivious to it. He said, What has happened? Nice and casual from Jesus there. They said the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, he was a man of God, a prophet, dynamic in work and word, blessed by both God and all the people. Then our high priests and leaders betrayed him, got him sentenced to death and crucified him. And we had our hopes up that he was the one, the one about to deliver Israel. And it is now the third day since it happened. But now some of our women have completely confused us. Early this morning they were at the tomb and couldn't find his body. They came back with the story that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of our friends went off to the tomb to check and found it was empty, just as the woman said. But they didn't see Jesus. See, they are. They're still having this conversation. They're still talking to him. Still oblivious. They've just pretty much described everything that's happened to him. And he must be sat... And Jesus, I can just imagine being kind of like... Come on, get to the point. Look, I'm here. You're telling me everything that I already know, but get to the point. Then he said to them, and the message, the message version puts it like this, so thick-headed, so slow-hearted, why can't you simply believe all that the prophets said? Don't you see that these things had to happen, that the Messiah had to suffer, and only then enter into his glory? Then he started at the beginning with the book of Moses and went on through all the prophets pointing out everything in the scriptures that referred to him. They came to the edge of the village where they were headed. He acted as if he were going on, but they pressed him. Stay and have supper with us, it's nearly evening, the day is done. So he went in with them and here's what happened. He sat down at the table, taking the bread, and he blessed and broke and gave it to them. At that moment, open wide, wide-eyed, they recognised him, and then he disappeared. You know, and it goes on and you can read the rest of the scripture there. But there's a couple of points for us always to think about. Maybe where is Jesus? Do we recognise that he's there with us, there by there? That the answer's right there next to us? Sometimes we just need to maybe get pointed by other people in his direction. Sometimes we need to just get rid of our own thoughts to focus on him fully. 
But only that, he knows what we're looking for. He knows what our impossible tasks are that we may be facing. And he wants to make them possible. But sometimes we need to fully recognise who the he is, who the answer is, who the hope is, who the joy is, who the breakthrough is in. And I encourage tonight that that breakthrough, that hope, that answer is found in the name of Jesus. Such a remarkable person that can just change that moment, that thing where you're at your wit's end, that thing where you can't get through, that mountain that you can't seem to push through. He moves it. He makes an impact. He changes everything. I want to encourage you tonight that he's there right by your side. He's right by my side tonight. Just in arm's reach. Just to get after him. And maybe tonight you're brand new to church. You have no idea what I'm talking about. But you want to reach out to him. You know that he's there. You've heard that he's there. Maybe you've been joining us on a Sunday and you've been hearing about this Jesus person. I would encourage you tonight that he wants to know you. That you can give your life to him. That you can see your life transformed. Not made perfect. Everything doesn't turn brilliant. But what happens is your life's changed from the inside out for the better. That he's there with you at all times. And is there to walk with you through every battle that you face. Good evening, Jim. I hope you're well. So there's just some encouragement from that piece of scripture that Jesus rose from the dead for us. And in Romans, we read, this is what can give us a bit of encouragement as well, that we're blessed, that we, that we have something to give. You know, when we accept Jesus as our life and when Christ lives within us, in Romans, typically I haven't noted the chapter, but I want to say chapter 6 and it's verse 10, but just listen to the scripture. Christ lives within you, so even though your body will die because of sin, the spirit gives you life because you've been made right with God. And this is the bit that I want us to get hold of here. The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, lives in me. And just as God raised Christ from the dead, he will give your life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. That same spirit that Jesus had to overcome death, to overcome that grave, lives in us when he lives in us. When we accept him into our heart, when we accept him into our lives, that same power lives in us. Now, surely on that note, it means that all things are possible, that we can do everything. But as Pastor Nathan was talking about on one of the Sundays, that actually what God wants to do it with us, alongside us, that we're in partnership with him, we're in partnership with the Holy Spirit to go out and see miracles happen, to go out and advance his kingdom. You know, it's that same power that made the impossible possible on that day that we'll be celebrating in just a matter of weeks really at Easter. That same power lives in you, lives in me, and lives in all that accept him into their lives. So that's all well and good, but one thing that I want to touch on and finish this kind of mini-series on a Thursday, you know, we're going to be continuing on a Sunday, and I'd encourage you to join us on that note this Sunday, half past ten, live on YouTube. We've got a guest speaker from Northern Ireland. I'm probably going to get his name wrong, but I think it's Michael Crossan. He's got a great word for us, a timely word for what happens when God moves in our lives. So I encourage you to tune in half past ten on Sunday for that. Be ready for that. But what I want to just finish on this is what happens when that doesn't happen? What happens when we feel a breakthrough coming? We can see a breakthrough coming. God, I'm praying for this to change. God, I'm praying for a breakthrough in this. God, I want to see this change, that change. And it doesn't happen. Because it can be disheartening when you hear a message like tonight or you hear a message from Sunday and it doesn't happen. Some things we need to remember is one is that God is in control. 
that it's in his timing, in his will, that things happen. That that is out of our control. You know, we need to submit to him. We need to pray into it. We maybe need to pray and fast like we've been doing on a Monday and a Friday. I encourage you to join us with that. And sometimes we need to sacrifice everything so that he can do that. But one thing that I've learned when things don't happen, when it seems like God isn't moving, you know, like the song Waymaker, even when I don't see it, even when I don't feel it, know that he is working in the midst. Know that he is working in the background. And I see it like this, that we are uh, kind of a canvas. You know, he is, you might have heard the song through it, the scripture with it as well, that he is the master, that he is the potter, that the weather clay and he moulds us and he forms us. But I see like this, that whenever we're going through a difficult situation or whenever we're going through a time and situation, that what he's doing there is that he is challenging us. But not only that, he's equipping us to expand. He's equipping us to see more of him, that it's an opportunity to grow in him so that we can have more of him in our lives, that we can learn more about him. There, when we get out of that, we can be more effective for his kingdom because we've been built up more. Those challenges haven't come to set us back. Those challenges have come to set us up, to look up, to look forward. He's going to increase our capacity in him so that we can be more effective for his kingdom. And just one thing that I've looked to do this year, um, it really struck me that God knows my name, that God knows everything about me, and I really want to know about more about him from an a individual perspective, but also for us as a church, I think it's important that we know more about him, that we know about, more about his name, more about who he is, more about his character. You know, in the Old Testament, we find the names of God, and one of my aims this year is to not just learn the names, but also learn the meaning behind each name. And whenever I come across a challenging time this year, I'm going to recite these names and remind myself who God is, how powerful he is, how amazing he is. And I apologise if I pronounce some of these names wrong. For theologians out there, I apologise now, but I'm going to give it a go. We start with El Shaddai, Lord God Almighty. El Elyon, the Most High God. Adonai, Lord, Master. Yahweh, Lord Jehovah. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my banner. Jehovah Ra, the Lord, my shepherd. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Jehovah Shekenu, the Lord, our righteousness. Jehovah Mekodeshkem, the Lord who sanctifies you. El Olam, the everlasting God. Elohim, meaning God. Hannah, jealous. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. Jehovah Sabbath, the Lord of hosts. And I'm going to look to try and memorise that, to get that into me, so that whenever I get into a difficult time, that I can remember all of this. I can remember Emmanuel, God with us, God with me. But I can quote this, I can remember that he's the Lord God Almighty, that he is the Most High God, that he is Master, that he is my banner, he is my shepherd, he is my healer, he is there, he is my righteousness, he sanctifies me, he is everlasting, he provides, he is peace, he's the Lord of hosts. So many things that he is. Such an incredible, indescribable God that we need to remember in those times when it doesn't feel like it's going to break through, that it doesn't feel like that mustard seed faith that we've given him is resulting in a breakthrough, that we remember that there's probably a lesson to learn, that we need to press into him even more, that we need to give to him more, that we remember who he is. And now I'm out of breath. But I want to encourage you that maybe that breakthrough that you're so long and full hasn't quite happened. Do not give up. Stick in there. Keep declaring who he is over your life. Declare those names over your life. Declare that he is God, that he is good. And watch him do amazing things. It's amazing how many times the breakthrough is just round the corner from us quitting. 
and I can just recall the time and time again in my life, in other people's lives that I've heard testimonies, that they've been close to giving up. They've been close to, God, there's not a job out there for me, I'm going to give up. I'm done financially, I give up. I'm not going to get healed. You know, but the amount of time that I've heard people go, God, I'm close to giving up, but I'm going to trust you. God, I'm close to selling my everything I own because I'm struggling financially and I'm going to trust you in that. God, I'm going to trust you. God, I'm on the edge of breaking down, but I'm going to trust you. And things just change in an instance. And it doesn't always happen like that, so don't quote me on that. But stick in there. Your breakthrough might just be round the corner. Yeah, I hope this is encouraging you tonight. I hope it's lifting your spirit. But God's with you. He is for you. He's not against you. And when God's for you, nothing can stand against you. Good evening, Danny. I hope you're well. You know, so recognise tonight. One, remember what he's done. That he rose again, and that same power lives in you. Recognise that he's just there, beside you. He's within an arm's reach of you. If you don't know him tonight, reach out to him. Accept him into your life. If you want to know more about that, get in touch. Recognise that it doesn't always happen when we want it to. It doesn't always happen the way we want it to. It doesn't necessarily look how we think it's going to look. But it's God's will, God's timing, and his way of doing things. And his way is the best way. Second to none. By far the best way. But keep pressing into him. Keep believing. And watch God do incredible things. I just want to finish by saying thank you so much for, for coming out. You know, we don't take it lightly that you give up your Thursday evenings to come and spend time online. But I hope it's encouraged you. I encourage you to watch these back. You know, I even watch myself back as hard as it is. And I make notes and pick things up, same as Sundays. But I just want you to know that as a church, we value your time, we value your commitment. Thank you so much for joining us. Stick in there. If there's anything that we can be praying about, drop us a message. Any way that we can communicate with you, let us know. Because we want to be praying, we want to be seeking God. Tomorrow we'll be fasting. I encourage you to join us, whether that's fasting. Food if you're able to, if you are not able to, if medical or it's not possible. Maybe think about what you can fast. Let's seek God. Sunday, half past ten, YouTube, Michael Cross, and it's going to be a great morning to worship, to hear from him, to be challenged and equipped for that week ahead. But God bless everyone. I've been praying for you. Keep going, and the Lord bless you, may keep you. Let's go for it. Let's see that impossible made possible. God bless. Good night. And I'll see you on Sunday.